As tens of thousands of people flock to Arizona for the Super Bowl, there is a hidden danger that might be lurking in the soil. Medical professionals are warning about a dangerous fungal illness that's been rapidly spreading across the country, most notably, though, in California and Arizona. And that's because this fungi, it thrives in a warmer and dry environment. Yeah, the illness, it is called valley fever, and it occurs when a person inhales those spores that are on the ground or are uprooted by things like construction work or human activity or even wind. Now, the good news is that it's not transmissible by humans, but of course, there are things that we need to know about this illness in order to understand it and be prepared. Fox News correspondent Marianne Rafferty joining us now to share her personal experience with Valley Fever after her son was diagnosed with the illness in 2014. Marianne, thank you for shedding light on this. Thank you for having me on to talk about this. Um, hi, Stephen and Marissa. Um, my son was diagnosed at, at just under three years old, but for two years he had this fungal illness and we had absolutely no idea. That's a picture of him right now that you're looking at and we are actually very lucky. We're one of the lucky ones because he's thriving today. He's 11 years old, um, but there was a time right around the time he was diagnosed when we were not sure if we would walk out of the hospital with our son or not. Um, and the problem was, is uh, we were living in New York at the time, and most doctors in New York are just not, they may have heard about it in medical school, but they don't see as many cases, and so they didn't know to test for this. So the first thing that happened is my son ended up with massive brain swelling um, in a condition called hydrocephalus. And at the time, the doctor said, well, we know he had some sort of illness that caused this, but we don't know what it is. Um, and they didn't know to test for this fungus. So two years go by and the fungus is just running rampant in his system mm. and he got extremely ill. The shunt that they had to place in order to drain his brain fluid properly um, had failed. So when they took it out, the doctor said, this thing's covered in fungus wow. of some sort and we've got to test it and figure out what this is. And at this point, you know, we're in pe pediatric ICU and we had been there for quite some time trying to figure out how to best treat him. He had, you know, multiple brain surgeries uh, during this time. Um, and they finally came back to us and the infectious disease doctor walked in and he said, this is valley fever, coccidioidomycosis. Doctors call it coxie. He said, I, I heard about this in medical school, but I've never seen a case like this. And at this time, you know, again, my son was two years old and he had disseminated valley fever, which means it had gone all the way through his central nervous system and was basically thriving you know, th through his brain, and that's what caused the swelling. And so when they finally figured out what it was, they hit him with the hardest medicine that they could find, uh, something called amphotericin, which nurses call amphoterrible. It was a really awful thing for him to have to go through, and along with all the brain surgeries. But they diagnosed him and they said, we're gonna give you this um, antifungal medication. You've gotta take it every single day, and he'll be taking that for the rest of his life, but it keeps the valley fever from coming back. Because in his case, because it was all over his body, it's, it lies dormant, so you, you have to take this medication to, to sort of keep it at bay. And that's where we are now. Wow. He's still got the, the shunt, the tube that allows his brain fluid to drain properly um, as a result of the valley fever. Um, but the daily medication has kept it from coming back, and we've been very, very lucky because there are many cases where it doesn't get diagnosed in time and, you know, people end up with, with major problems, you know, paralyzed or, you know, needing transplants. And, and a lot of times the valley fever, when doctors look at it on an x-ray, it mimics lung cancer. They see nodules and think, oh, the person's got lung cancer. Yeah. When, and they treat that when it, all they had to do was take the pills that my, my son takes every day mm -hmm. to to kill the fungus. And Marianne, you know, as, and as you're talking, we're actually d looking at some of those symptoms. I mean, we have fat fatigueness, cough, fever, shortness of breath, uh, night sweats, even one of those things. I mean, if anyone experiences these symptoms, I mean, for you guys, your, your little boy, so so young, you guys were able to, to act quickly and that was a, a good sign. But as you had mentioned, it could lead to some long lasting effects through life. Absolutely. And, and you know, a lot of those symptoms you were just talking about, well, they that can be flu, that can be, you know, allergies I mean we just for the longest time we're like oh he must just have severe allergies we changed his food and the whole time it was this fungus and so I always tell every single doctor every nurse every medical professional I come across just remember this remember what this fungus can do keep it in the back of your mind so if you've got a case whether it's an adult or a child and it's rare in kids that young in fact my my son's case is the youngest still one of the youngest known cases of serious disseminated valley fever um, that's occurred. 
But if you've got a case and you don't know what it is, and it's flu-like mm -hmm. symptoms, you know, vomiting, headaches, all of that sort of thing, you know, test for it. Yeah. So if doctors know to test for it, they're gonna catch it early. And if you catch it early, it's like having a, a cold, you get over it and then you're fine and then you have lifelong immunity. And I will say, Marianne, too, you know, one of the things, I have two young boys myself, and just when they have a, a, a cold, you get worried and you get scared. So experiencing something like that, you did everything right, you advocated yeah. for your son, and you eventually found him the proper treatment. Appreciate you sharing this because it's very scary when you don't know what is making your child so sick. So hopefully this can disseminate and everybody can get a little bit more information about it. Appreciate you taking the time. Uh, Fox News correspondent Marianne Rafferty, thank you. Thank you. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.